Happy bow tie Friday. I'm Austin Griffith. I'm here with Patrick from Chainlink. We're going to hack on all sorts of stuff. He's got his bow tie. We're doing crazy stuff. We're doing our moves. We're going to do some scaffold ETH and Chainlink hack. Are you down? I'm super down. And thanks awesome. so much for having me on. Like, I, I love the Austin Griffith energy. Super excited to be here. Let's build some fun stuff. Awesome. I'm going to start it off first. I'm just going to share my screen and just start with like a two minute, like, why, why scaffold ETH? And then we can go from there. Okay, so why scaffold ETH? It's sort of like a freestanding DAP and it's ready to go. I'm wondering, can I move this over here? Hopefully that stays. I don't know how Zoom recording works. Sometimes I mess it up and it doesn't show up. Hopefully we're still here and we're seeing each other. But I can see it. I can see it. Okay, <laughs> dope, dope. Uh, with scaffold ETH, you get like a freestanding DAP out of the box and you, you've got your smart contract and you've got your front end, you've got a bunch of components in your front end, but what you can do is just kind of make a small change to your smart contract, make a small change to your app and kind of like start off on solid ground with everything working with, with things like, you know, web three connect here or burner wallets, or even if I go look at this wallet and type in Vitalik, .eth, it's got ENS resolution and reverse resolution. And I can just send him $10 instead of typing in whatever the amount is in ETH, right? So, oh, I can hit send there. Boom, there it goes. And you also get uh, burner wallet accounts. So if I do another uh, browser here, I'm going to get a second account. And we can just like copy that dude's address and then go over here and paste that. Whoa, paste that dude in and send a whoa, what am I doing? Send a dollar, hit send, then a dollar shows up over here, right? Okay, so you've got accounts, you've got these components that come out of the box, uh, but the key here is you can really like, let, let me just like make a couple exclamation points here and I'm gonna redeploy this contract. And this is the iteration loop. You want this nice tight iteration loop where you can make a small change in solidity, have your contract redeployed, hot reloaded in your front end, and then you can get a change and you can kind of like, tinker around and see if it works the way you think it's going to work and you can make you know an, another change here and maybe add in a mapping or a struct and do your solidity stuff and then it pretty soon it'll show up over here like i could even do a un8 number equals one. Oh, and i gotta make that public too right and then hit save and deploy that contract. I could even have it watching. And then this thing's gonna adjust to that. It's gonna say, oh, I can see you're bringing in a new uint. Here, here is the display for that uint. There we go, awesome, cool. So that's basically the why of Scaffold ETH. And you can look up Scaffold ETH uh, and it just takes you to the repo and there's a ton of branches. And we'll, we may, may get into some of these branches later, but I, the thing that I really wanna dive into is Patrick's Chainlink branch because it takes Scaffold ETH and does stuff that's like get VR, VRF random numbers and get uh, price feeds and other feeds from outside of the blockchain, which is really exciting. And, and we were talking about this off the call, as soon as you guys bring in a new feed, a whole market can spring up around that, right? You were talking about the Tesla feed earlier. So I'm excited to dive into this. Uh, I'll, I think you should drive now, I'll backseat drive, and, and let's check out some chain link uh, on Scaffold ETH. Yeah, for sure. So there's there's a whole lot to unpack there too, right? Um, especially like every time a new data feed comes up, you now have unlimited applications that can be built, right? Like just, just having like a data feed um, if we're going to talk like D DeFi, for example, you can now build like unlimited synthetic assets, basically. And that right there, just every new data feed is a new synthetic asset, right? For those of you who are unfamiliar with Chainlink, uh, by the way, Chainlink is a way to get decentralized data. It's a way to get data into your smart contracts from the outside world and send data and send transactions from your smart contract to the real world, right? So it's this, it's this gap closer between the walled garden of blockchain and the real world and allows us to do some really fun stuff and some really cool stuff, which is which is why we're here talking about really fun stuff and really cool stuff. So yeah, any type of data that you want, um, there are something that's really important when we're talking about data is making sure the data is decentralized, right? Because our logic layer, when we're working with Ethereum, when we're working with Matic, XDAI, that's all decentralized and that's all well and good. So if we're gonna get data, we need that data to be centralized as well. Other, be decentralized, excuse me, be decentralized as well. Otherwise, we're going to have our logic layer, which is decentralized, and our data layer, which is centralized, and it kind of defeats the purpose of building a blockchain in the first place. So Chainlink is For a instance, way to bring... 
I, I have an Oracle on Nifty Inc. And it's just mm -hmm. one machine of mine sending the price of ETH into XDAI, so, or the price of gas into XDAI. So I know how much to charge people to upgrade. But that is just a, that's just a script I'm running, right? And that can mm -hmm. fall over at any time. You need yep. these feeds to be set up. So even if the strongest actor in the network wanted to shut it down, they can't shut it down. And that's, that's yeah. what you want. Sorry. Exactly. No, no, you're good. No, that's 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 spot on, right? So, and especially in DeFi, right? When Chainlink is carrying something like ten billion dollars in in the DeFi space right now, um, it can't be it can't be somebody's you know script in their apartment. You know, maybe they lose power or something, and then all of a sudden, ten billion dollars of DeFi is flushed down the tube. You know, that that's something that we really want to avoid when we're building these smart contracts. So, um, so this is something that Chainlink enables, um, and enables this unlimited connectivity and. Um, something else that's really cool is randomness in these, you know, deterministic systems. It's really hard. Any of you guys who are familiar with computer science, you know that when you create a random number, it's actually pseudo random because it usually it'll grab some like file and like compute something with the hash and be like, okay, this number is random. Uh, Chainlink VRF is actually a way to get a provably cryptographically guaranteed random number, which is kind of mind bogglingly insane, um, but we can do some really cool stuff. So without further ado, uh, let me share screen as a, as uh as austin i'm imagining yeah. the truly random is going to have that same thing where you've got all the different uh adapters or what it is like it's yeah. a big circle of people committing things yeah I, i'm excited <laughs> to see it for sure yeah no there's there's uh there, there's just an insane amount of stuff we could do so uh so Bear i blew you're you're traditionally a finance dude too right sorry i i, I am traditionally a finance That's dude awesome. yeah my uh my my background uh, before this, I was doing uh, I was a support engineer working on infrastructure at a, at a hedge fund, and after that, I was working at a financial data vendor. So um, so oddly enough, I'm from finance, which is which is really weird because growing up, so cool. I would have never that that would never I never would have imagined that was something that came out of my mouth. But um, <laughs> I, I, I'm a tech guy. I'm a tech guy, and I was interested in the finance side, which uh, kind of makes sense that it led me to you know the internet of, of monies. Um, but now we're here and I'm, I'm just loving technology. So can, can you guys, can you see the screen? Okay. Yep. Um, yep. I've got, I've got a terminal with scaffold ETH in VS code. Great. I, I, I zoomed in a little bit so that we could, we could oh, be yeah. good. Here. So, um, so I, I'm just going to go ahead and, and yarn start. So I've already, um, for those of you who are looking to follow along, there's a chain link example branch, um, that we're that's, uh, in PR right now for scaffold ETH. Um, but uh, you don't even have to use this one if you don't want. You can kind of, we'll, we'll go through exactly what this looks like in the code. So if you want to reproduce it, you can. Uh, but we're just going to go ahead and yarn start and show you what we are working with here. And that's going to bring up our React dev server. Exactly. Yeah. So what this is doing actually when, when we're hitting yarn start, uh, it's bringing up the UI. So before this call, I've already kind of deployed a lot of the smart contracts to the Rinkby chain. Uh, and for those of you who have worked with Scaffold ETH before, most of the time you're actually working on kind of your own local, uh, your own local instance, like a Ganache or something like that. We're actually going to work directly with the Rink B chain, right? Because the way that oracles work is you need a device, you need these oracles to be reading uh, and, and basically subscribed to an Ethereum chain, right? So if we uh, if we just deploy on a local chain, there are no oracles, there are no systems that are reading on that local chain. Obviously, you can kind of deploy it yourself. Um, deploy chain link to your local chain and kind of test like that. Um, but this is uh, this is a way for us to in hook into the already existing Oracle networks on existing chains, uh, which is really, really cool. So um, we hit yarn start. UI has popped up. Hopefully this looks nice and big for everybody. Looks good. Yeah, we got it. Look, looks good. Okay, cool. Um, and we are connected to uh, the Rink B chain here. So how do I go away? Oh, thank you. Uh, we're, we're connected to the Rink B chain here. I'm on Coven. Let's not do Coven. Let's do Rinkby. We're going to connect here with MetaMask due to the beautiful. I don't actually have this much money. That's all. Uh, <laughs> that's all ETH. Uh, Rinkby ETH, by the way. Um, but immediately what pops up is uh, some of the functionality of the Chainlink smart contracts. So the first thing and the easiest thing that we see is we see this price feed contract and we see this price feed address. So what this is doing is really, really simply, it's bringing the price of Ethereum and US dollars on chain for digestion for your smart contract. So that's a lot of decimals. It's a lot it's of decimals. 1453.6346. Right? Like there's like nine decimals. Is that right? But that yep. could be, I guess, in finance. That's yeah. important. <laughs> no, no, you're, you're, you're spot on. So they, well, so the thing is too, in, um, in Solidity, 
Solidity doesn't work with decimals pretty much at all. Um, it, it works in absolute, like yes or no's. Um, so this, when we read this number, it's actually 1,453.634, blah, 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 right? Um, because when we read these, uh, when we read off the contracts, this is what it's actually going to look like. Uh, and we have to know that since it's a an, it's an FUSD feed, it has eight decimals basically, right? Um, so this is in our smart contracts, and now you can do whatever you want with this. You can you can say you can you can set prices in USD, but take ETH as payment, right? And use this price feed to convert stuff, or you can build um, you know synthetic uh, derivatives platforms like Synthetics, which is a platform that is, uses Oracle based um, a trading platform. You can do something like like Ave. Where they do their borrowing and lending, you know. I, for those of you who are kind of new to DeFi, you can check out DeFi Pulse. These are some of the protocols that are using these these price feeds, and you know why it's so um, insanely powerful, and you know why it's securing uh, so much money. I'm going to zoom in a little bit here. You have Aave, which is securing you know uh, 4.5 billion dollars. Uh, you have Synthetics, 2.2 billion, 2.1 billion. Um, uh, Alpha, nope, not Alpha Homora. Uh, Yearn dot finance, I think DYDX, Loopring, Set Protocol. You have all these protocols that are securing uh, a lot of money using these prices because it's it's the easiest way um, to get these prices on chain and make these you know uh, cryptographic math based contracts. So we can see it right here. Can I, we can also yeah. see down in the bottom left. So we're bringing in the price of ETH, looking at the Uniswap. So even arbitrage is another uh, example of a reason why maybe you would want a price feed in there or something like that. This this price feed is actually in the contract, right? We're reading it on chain. But if yep. you had a script, it could be checking different prices at different places and kind of making trades, uh, you know, yep. to level those out. Yep, spot on, spot on, absolutely. And then, so this is a test net, so it's a little bit less accurate because it doesn't get updated as much. Uh, on the main net, the, the updates are, are, are obviously a little bit more uh, updated. Um, but yeah, you can you can we'll we'll show you how to kind of use this contract in in your in your smart contracts and actually you know build some of these protocols um, if we have time. So the next thing that I want to show you is actually this this VRF feature. So this is a, an example of a VRF smart contract. It stands for verifiably random misfunction. It allows you to get a provably cryptographically random number into your smart contract, which again is insane, right? Uh, the conventional way to get these random numbers is actually to use the uh, a a block hash of the current like block height or something like that, um, but that's pseudo random, right? The the issue here is that the miners actually have control over the fairness of that agreement. So let's say, for example, you have a lottery that secures you know a billion dollars, right? The winner gets a billion dollars, which is insane. Um, a miner is heavily incentivized, you know, if they participate in this lottery, to mine the block that makes them win, right? So if you're hashing like the block height or 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 something, right? Uh, and they produce the winning block, uh, or, or excuse me, not not the block height because that wouldn't be random at all. Um, if you're hashing like the, the the block hash or the or the winning block, right? And then a miner sees that if they publish a block, they won't win, and they just keep throwing out blocks until they mine the the, the block that makes them win. Uh, your application is no longer fair, right? So this is actually a huge issue. We have seen protocols uh, on different blockchains get attacked by this. So what we can do. Is we can actually uh, get a random, a truly random number by working with these this VRF here. And so what we want to actually start with is called a, a user provided seed. Um, so there's also could... a clunky commit reveal also for like randomness. There's like a, we should we should talk about an old pattern, kind of a step up from block hash, but not nearly as good as a nice VRF would be like a well, commit well, reveal scheme. Well, oh, you, well, you actually, want to bring... go ahead. Well, actually, the ultimate is commit reveal plus. Okay. VRF. So ah, that's like, I like, that's that. like super, like super, super sick stuff. Um, so commit reveal is, is still really good. Um, what, so what you'd want to do, um, and it's like important if you want to have like a, a truly fair, like auction, for example, right. Cause like an issue with, with auctions, like eBay style, or well, old eBay styled auctions is that users would just wait to the last minute and then put it in like a super high bid and just win at the end. Right. Um, so what is done instead is uh, what could be done or should be done instead is you actually um, commit a hashed random number and say, you know, within this hour, the auction is going to end, but we're not going to tell you when until the end of the hour, right? So people put it in their bids and they're incentivized to not wait till the end and, and just put in a whole bunch because the auction actually ended at some point before, but nobody knows when because the reveal happens at the end of the auction. Neat. I did. I've never heard of that mechanism before. I like it. 
yeah, there's there's some pretty there's some really cool stuff happening in this space. Um, but as, as you know, um, but yeah, so so what we're gonna do to interact with the chain link oracles in the same way we interact with um, with with Ethereum or Matic or XDAR or whatever is we we use gas to interact with chain link oracles. We actually use link as the oracle gas. So with the get the latest price fee, we didn't have to use any link because this has already been aggregated by the nodes. Somebody already made these requests. Um, we're actually going to make the request ourselves. So what we need to do is we actually need to pop up MetaMask, and hopefully you guys can see this. It's a, and I copied the address. We're going to send it some testnet ring ETH. Let's send it a bunch just in case we want to do this a whole bunch of times. We'll send it some uh, some testnet ring ETH, and this is going to be used as the the Oracle gas to actually interact with um, to actually interact with the VRF node, right? So we pay we pay ETH to get our transaction mined, but we pay Link to get our data feed populated. Spot on, spot yep. on. Yeah, yep. We pay yeah ETH to get the transaction mined, and then Link to uh, and get one the little mine. extra so. thing. Get the Oracle mine. One extra thing in there is the uh, you mentioned that other people could have mined it, right? If we all need the same feed. Once one person goes and pays for it, it's on chain and public and people can go read it. So it's like there's almost like this public good of like providing on chain randomness or providing yeah. some feeds that, that then like there's probably some coordination that has to happen with a bunch of groups to figure out who pays when or something like that. Yeah, so, so that's actually a really cool concept called um, called the randomness beacon. It's like a beacon of randomness that people can like randomly um, get like access to like one one random area um but yeah yeah exactly there's a lot of really cool stuff so we're going to go ahead and hit send so this is going to send our request we're saying hey can you please get us a random number and this and actually C's, what like it's like it's just like you saying I, i'm i'm somewhat in control like why why the seed why like is it yeah yeah it's, it's a good question so we'll, we'll see in the contracts too um when we actually request a random number uh we need basically like a kicking off point to prove when we get it back, that it's actually a random number. So there's this, the contract is called the, the VRF coordinator. And what this does is it takes this, this seed, combines it with the Oracle's key hash, and it uses that to cryptographically prove that the number is actually random. Um, so there's a little bit of galaxy brain stuff going on behind closed doors, uh, but the seed is, is a big piece in combination with the, with the key hash to be like, okay, here's what the users uh, put in as the, um, as the seed to kind of kick off the randomness, if you will. Uh, we're gonna combine that with the key hash to make sure it's actually random. Got it, cool, very, very much. Nice. Very, cool. It's kind cool. of like the commit reveal stuff where it's like gives you the the certainty that they're gonna give you a random number and it's gonna get mixed with whatever you gave them and it's gonna exactly. be even more random and you know yep. that they're not messing with you, that's cool. Yep, yep, exactly, exactly. So, um, and then, <laughs> there, so- There so, she is. There she is. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we went ahead and hit the um, refresh button there and, and this is the uh, the random number that we got. Uh, I forgot that it's absolutely massive. Um, it's a UINT uh, 256 or two, yeah, 256. Um, so, so that is a very, very, very big number, um, but which is good because it's super, freaking random um so so this and now you we probably can... do a modulo operator there right exactly. you would say modulo six and it's a dice roll or modulo 52 exactly. and these are your this is your card yeah exactly spot on so that's how you use price feeds that's how you use vrf um price feeds is kind of pulling in many many calls from many many different oracles many many different sources to get this truly decentralized piece of data right here um the smallest unit of chain link is working with these api calls here this makes a single api call to a single node um, obviously, this is not good for production because you have this super centralized point of failure right now. Um, and there's there's some documentation kind of below to to work with it. We're going to skip over it a little bit here uh, because I, I I made a couple of mistakes um, that I, I will fix. Uh, and uh, and you can you can follow along in the tutorial below here um, to kind of do that as well. But um, the VRF and, and and the get latest price feed are the ones that we're kind of showcasing right now. Anyways. But um, this price feed is like is the easiest way to, to work with um, work with uh, work with Chainlink here, and we can even go into the contracts really quick just to see kind of how they what they look like. Um, so here is a is the price feeds code, you know, right in the scaffold ETH um, bit, and it's just dropped into um, it's just dropped into the kind of the, the front end setup here. Um, a couple quick notes to work with this uh, and to get this set up. Um, we're using a couple of environmental variables. So we're using a RinkB RPC URL. This is how we connect to the RinkB network. 
And this is going to be something like Infura. It's going to be something like Alchemy. It's going to be these different uh, Ethereum clients. You can even run a local ETH node um, if you're feeling brave. Your mnemonic device obviously is going to be um, the mnemonic from your private key, from like your your, your MetaMask or whatever. So um, uh, you can you can get all these as environment variables, but just by doing like export mnemonic uh, or, or however you spell it equals um, you know, <laughs> cat, dog, frog, you know, frog, or et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then same thing with with uh, RinkB RPC rel, you know, export RinkB anyways. Um, but that's how you that's how you get this setup is is setting those two environment variables first. But once you do that, then you can run like yarn deploy. And this will actually uh, not do anything. Um, yarn run deploy. Is that what it is? Uh, oh, I need to add this. Sorry, yarn add this. Or yarn. All right. Yarn add this. Nope, not yarn add this. Where, oh, it, it, so the yarn adding has to happen within the packages in scaffold ETH. So you may need to go oh. into the hard hat folder. So if you go CD packages hard hat and then do the yarn, sorry, I was I was missing that. There and then go. hard hat. There now, now up, up and enter your, there you go. Yep. Chain link contracts. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm being, I'm being dumb. No, that was no. That's a we need to because it, it uses workspaces with Yarn, and it's just right, not, right, right. it's not like native really to most developers yet. But right, right. it's it's coming. Yeah, we're we're good. We're good. We're we're in there. So we Yarn add the chain link. So sorry about that. We got to add the chain link here. And once it's deployed, then we can go back down and we can run Yarn deploy. And this is actually going to publish, and you'll you'll see it compile here, and it's going to say deploying price feeds. Uh, deploy price feeds to blah blah blah. It'll deploy the VRF. It'll deploy the API calls, and these are on the Rink B, uh, the Rink B network. So we can go to the Rink B Ether scan here. We can type that in. Oh, that's not what we want to type in. Uh, we can type this in here, and we see this was just created, um, and we can see and we can interact with it, and then we get uh, a whole bunch of fun scaffold ETH messages here hey we published it we published it we published it which, uh, which is great so so this is kind of do you, setup. you have to deploy a vrf contract along with your contract or is that a vrf example contract so that's a VR, you know that's a vrf example contract okay so that's, okay that's the contract um like you could hook into an already deployed one okay uh, if, if we wanted to like tinker with this and do whatever we wanted we could we could do that yeah i think i think that's might be the next plan is and and i just did so i did the yarn install in in mine and so now oh, yeah. i'm bringing in the vrf stuff but what I'm, I'm guessing, I'm just going to pattern match and look at your VRF soul, and that should be enough. And then that just deploys to Rinkaby, and it should work. But I'll, I'll tinker around with it too. You keep going. I'll, I'll try to have this about ready so we can switch to All right. that. All right, cool, cool. Um, but yeah, so the price feed stuff is is just it, it's right here, right? So we have this aggregator v3 interface. We're we're saying, hey, this is the address of FUSD on the Rinkaby network. Excuse me. Um, and this is where we're going to be able to pull the price from because this is where all that aggregation is being done, right? Um, and so this is it. So we have contract price feed. We're gonna import the chain link code um, into this contract here. Uh, we're setting our price feed variable to this aggregator v3 interface. And then we have the function get the latest price, which actually returns a whole bunch of stuff, but we only care about price. Um, so we're just gonna return the price. And so this is it. This is all it's really doing. The VRF. Doing a little bit more things because it's uh, it's got to do this cryptographic magic behind the scenes. Uh, so what we actually want to do for this is we're going to import um, this VRF consumer base and using uh, the like inheritance of solidity, we're having our VRF contract be is VRF consumer base, right? And this allows us to when we go to initialize the contract, uh, we can we can pull in this VRF consumer base constructor add the VRF coordinator address and link token address. So the VRF coordinator address has been already deployed by somebody and it's on chain. And this is what actually does all the magic to check to make sure the random number that we're getting is actually random. So there's a ton of logic there that's verifying the random number is truly random. Uh, we have the link token, which is the link token on, on Rinkby. And then we have the key hash, 
which again is, is being used by uh, the, the VRF coordinator to make sure the number is actually random. And then we have our, our, our link or Oracle gas fee here. So, and then all we have is this, this Garana number, which returns this, um, excuse me, which returns kind of this request here. Um, and we import that user provided seed like we saw on the front end. And literally all it does is calls this request randomness function, uh, which is actually imported by this VRF consumer base. So we call this request randomness and async, like Austin was saying, the node makes the request and actually the node itself then responds by calling this fulfill randomness function. So the node is, is, is acting almost like it has its own wallet, it has its own address, it has its own everything, and it calls this fulfill randomness function and just sets this randomness number uh, to our public randomness variable, which was that, that massive thing that we saw uh, in the demo earlier. So, so that's really all, all the contracts do. And then we just we plop them into the ETH scaffold interface. So we have a super simple UI. Uh, we added a couple faucets onto the UI. So um, if you head on down here, for example, you can get like, um, uh, oh, cool. Coven link. Some Rinkaby link. I'm probably going to need that if I want to use VRF, huh? Yep. You can get, you oh, can just shoot, hit let that. Me go do that. You can hit that rink B. You can hit exactly. Yeah. You just go ahead and hit that rink B link thing, Austin. I don't know why, um, I didn't change the, uh, the flags and stuff here, <laughs> but, uh, you can just get some rink B link to add that into your smart contracts here. And, uh, uh, and, and, and look good. So, um, yeah, I, I took, I took a lot longer to explain stuff Let's than see. I thought it would because I ran into some issues, but, uh, so who's going to need the link, probably my deployer account, but let me, let me just set up my MetaMask to get the yeah, link sure. at first. Cause I, I want to try this out, just kind of work through this as if I'm a new developer picking up chain link for the first time and bring it in just yeah. maybe some things to look for. So I'm going to steal the screen, I guess. Let's go here. Got me. Okay. And I think I just sent some 100 Rinkaby link to austingriffith.eth. Uh, let's see. We want to be on Rinkaby just in case. Mm -hmm. Will it, it probably won't show my Rinkaby assets already, will it? Nope. Okay. Wait, did I do that already? I think I oh, did that you, already. You got you to add, uh, add the link token to your MetaMask too. Right, right. Cool. Okay. So let's see. Uh, first, I want to just kind of start with what we have so far. So, so again, it's just like a, a, a classic scaffold ETH build where you do yarn start or yarn start to bring up your React server, yarn chain to bring up a local chain. Nice. Uh, but we probably don't want a local chain, do we? We'll, we'll okay. go to Rinkaby very quickly. But okay. I, I'm going to deploy once on local to make sure <laughs> make sure it works, okay. <laughs> and then sure. we'll go. So what what I'm I, this is just like a super super simple NFT. Uh, so there's just your collectible, and it's pulled straight from Open Zeppelin. Uh, you Bye. use a counter to increment the the NFT. Uh, the only thing I've added here is an ownership pattern where only the nice. owner can mint. But what we're going to do, I think, is we're going to put this mint in that callback from the VRF. So I think we're going to call to the VRF and it's oh, not going to mint until yeah, they call yeah, yeah. the callback. What, do they good. spend the gas? What happens with that? Yeah, the, the Oracle spends the gas. So they actually, so to like not get gas attack, they have like a max gas cap. And if you you ask to like spend too much gas, they'll just ax the transaction, so. So there is kind of like a gas limit with the link token when you're calling out to the oracles. And I can yeah. up that, like a, a hundred link or whatever I'm getting here is gonna be enough to afford to have them pay the gas to mint my NFT, right? So that might, so that's gonna be tricky. So it's, it's not variable yet. Like if you send more link, like the gas cap stays the same. Okay. Um, that, that's, that's something uh, for the next iterations, but um, but yeah, you should be able to mint no problem because that's actually what I did for the D and D stuff. Cool. Okay, so we've got our NFTs, we've got our collectible. I can redeploy this collectible contract all I want. Nothing is minted at first. There's a mint function that the admin can use to mint. Uh, so I could technically like, like I could check my balance here and see that it's still zero or whatever. Uh, but I could get in here and start minting if I was the owner, but I'm not. It's like the the faucet address, it's the first address. Yeah. So uh, I have a mint script and that's here. And so what this mint script does is it, it takes, okay, so maybe we should back out a little bit to IPFS for a second. Basically okay. like you, you, uh, you don't store all of it in an NFT, right? You just store a link to the information and then you put that information out on a distributed storage network where it can't you know fall over yeah. if you incentivize yeah. it and take care of it. And so no, we have, yeah, go ahead, please. I was just saying, no, it would be cool if we just do right now, though. We do we do store that attribute on chain. We'll get like, what's like a cool, like HP or something like that? Or like, yeah. uh, oh, yeah. What's like a cool, 
because then we yeah, just do no, random totally. module yeah, yeah, yeah. 100 or something like that you're saying built into whoops i'm looking at the wrong thing you're saying built into my token here let's not even put it on ipfs let's have them return some magic value and the yeah, token yeah, yeah. itself let's, will okay so for each token there. id let's keep track so let's put in a mapping in here okay it can yep. be looked up yes and so it'll be for each token id right so yep. for any given you went 256 let's just let's just do luck i like that because like they're okay yeah, yeah, mine, yeah. but let's make them lucky <laughs> So we'll make a UN256 to another UN256. Is that yep, what we'll exactly. get back from the VRF? Okay. Yep. And we'll make it public and we'll call it token luck. So okay. it's basically nice. each token. So on deployment, uh, at first, let's just say we'll set token luck for the ID uh, equal to one. So each each token stock has one luck. We're, we'll plug in oh. VRF in here in a second. I just want to try it out. What's up? So we'll like, we'll dynamic. Oh, okay. I see what you're saying. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll set it in a little bit. We'll overwrite that when we get the callback. But yeah, you also have these attributes over here. So you you sort of, uh, once you realize this pattern of NFTs where there's this token URI and that's a link to your metadata and your metadata lives on IPFS, then that data can be as big or as small as you want. And so you can put all these attributes in here. You can put in like the image and the name and all of that. So that'll go to IPS, IPFS, it's content addressable. So you're, you're accessing it with basically like the fingerprint of the data. If I were to take that fingerprint and kind of ask for it from IPFS, I get the same stuff back. If any little thing changes, then that hash is gonna change. So if I wanted to mint one, I would take uh, the hash and then my address and I would hit mint. And this isn't gonna work because I'm not the owner, but that's how I would do a mint. So what I have is a minting script that takes, uh, so I have a bunch of my paintings. Uh, if you go to austingriffith.com and go to paintings, I have a bunch of paintings. So imagine I'm a digital artist and I wanna like mint some NFTs, I have them here. And so what I've done is just built these JSON uh, packages for each of these paintings of mine. And so what I'm gonna do for each one is it puts the JSON into IPFS and then it takes that IPFS and puts it into the contract and mints a token using like 400,000 guests. So we're gonna to have to ask that Oracle, <laughs> if the Oracle's coming back to do this, let's make sure this works at first. And this is this will be like a challenge that'll be built into Scaffold ETH in a week or two when I get it finished, but it's just like a fun prototype I'm playing with and it'd be fun to plug VRF into it to see what happens. But yeah, we should sure. be minting if I go look at my collectibles, there they are, they're starting to show up. So now I have all these nice collectibles. If I were to go grab some other address and we'll do this on Rinkaby, I'll just send them to you. But uh, right here, I don't have an address, but if I wanted to send that Buffalo out, I could transfer it. If I wanted to send this one to Vitalik, I could do that. Have a zebra Vitalik. All right, <laughs> testnet zebra. <laughs> He's probably sitting there waiting for that too. You're welcome, yeah, buddy. He definitely is, he definitely is. <laughs> Okay. He's like, he's like, it's bow tie Friday. Where's my zebra? Yeah. Where's my zebra? Where's yep, my exactly. Zebra? <laughs> yep. Okay. So uh, we're all working locally. It's good. I'm ready to put this thing on another network. Same thing you, you talked about. You kind of have to get in there and you have to point uh, this at Rinkaby. Uh, I'm not going to do the, the same way you did your account. You can yep. just do yarn generate and it'll create an account for you, but I probably okay. even already done that. Yeah, there we go. And it's even full of Rinkaby already, but if you do a yarn generate, it writes a mnemonic locally and then yarn account and yarn deploy is all running on that mnemonic. Nice. But same thing. You created the mnemonic manually. You can just do yarn generate to do it. I didn't, uh, I should have that in the documentation better. <laughs> okay. Cool. So now we're pointed at Rinkaby. So I should be able to do a yarn deploy. And now we're going to a public network, right? I'm just going to okay, write so. the token contract to a public network. We're going to test it there, and then we're going to bring in VRF Let's once, do we, it. once we have that. OK, so our, my app is still pointed at localhost. So there's one other thing I need to change in the app.jsx. I need to say Rinkaby. Now our front end should reload. It should say yellow Rinkaby there. We don't have any collectibles, but we should be able to see this. And we should be able to see who the owner is and make sure everything's right. OK, now if I do a yarn mint, Let's make sure it's going to this dude's address too. Yep, okay, it is. Let's uh, let's fire it off. Let's see if this works. So hopefully now we're minting on Rinkaby, which really cool. You can take this address of this contract while we're waiting for this, I can go over to OpenSea and uh, what is it, Rinkaby.OpenSea? Mm -hmm. It's gonna yep. test nets.OpenSea, right? And say, yeah. I, want, I have an existing live on a test net contract, paste it in. Oh, it doesn't see it yet. 
I'm, I'm out ahead of their servers, I think. It hasn't- You're too, too fast. You're too fast for OpenSea. Yeah. So, so check this out. If I go to, if I, uh, this is the, uh, the cool, one, one cool thing about Scaffold ETH, that address component here, when I click it, it's going to realize that I've switched it over to Rinkeby and it's going to take us to the Rinkeby Ether scan. Isn't that nice? I had to change one thing that is, and that is it's there. Nice. It's out there, OpenSea, I promise. Well, anyways, yeah. what you get here is you get collectible. I don't, yeah, there we go. You, you end up seeing your collectibles and you can get in here and even see these, these properties, green and googly eyes. And I wanted to see yours. You figured out how to get like the cool loading bar. Mine's like just the thing. And it must be, I think you said some kind of in this IPFS yeah, thing, can. trait type. It's not, yeah, yeah, oh, I can, it's uh, probably like a type down here and it's going to be slider or something like that. Right. Cool. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's, that's, that's cool. I can tell you the okay. type right now. Let me let me find it. Hold on. No. It's uh, oh. type okay. tra yeah, attributes. So we, ooh, whoop, whoop. there we go. So inside of attributes, yep, and inside of one of those objects, trait type value. I have trait type value, but um, I don't have a string. I just have a number. So that's oh. it. Okay. Oh, the maybe number. that's it. It's because it's the a number. Yeah. If it was a number, duh, I'm yeah. Done. yeah. <laughs> if, it, if it was a number, it would be like, oh, we'll give you a slider here. Got yeah, it. Yeah, okay. Yep. Cool. 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 Or a loading bar, or whatever. Awesome. Okay. So I think this has happened. I think we've deployed. Uh, yo, let's see. Oh, you can't go. Let's see. Let me do a yarn build while we're waiting for it. Uh, uh, what? Oh. Okay, I'm gonna, I'll deploy a public site and send you one of my paintings for fun. But let's get yeah. into VRF while we're at it because uh, cool. this this will probably take a little bit, right? So I'm gonna bring in this dog. I've already done the NPM chain link nice. contracts because yeah. I saw you do that. I'm gonna bring nice. in that, right? And then we're gonna inherit this, I think, right? Yep. We're gonna yep. say is Definitely. is that dog? And then yep. I think I have your, there we go. Yeah, this is gonna be <laughs> a lot easier with your uh, handy cheat sheet here. There you go, yeah. Literally so, just Literally Do I need, to, I need to bring all that stuff in? Okay, cool. Yep, yep. The majority of it. So we're going to have those those uh, global contract variables. Yep, we're going to, right when we declare our um, our constructor right there. Yep. So that'll be ugly, good. but I'm going, I'm going quick copy and paste here. Cool. Quick copy paste. Love it. Boom. Well, that is the, the, send that to an auditor. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine, like, here's my smart contract, buddy. <laughs> here, have, have fun. Here, do this. Yeah. Have a good time. That's worse than the burner wallet code. Okay. Let's <laughs> it's see. okay. It's great. It's great. It's great. Um, okay. Oh, this already pushed. Let's do a yarn search, kind of doing two things at once here. Uh, Patrick animals. It's going to work. What's, what's yarn surge do? Uh, just upload to the website to search. So now you go to Patrick animals .surge and give me your address and I'll send you one of my, uh, paintings. It's not Patrick. quite loaded. Patrick Animals. <laughs> how do you spell, how do you spell yeah, Surge? That's true. Uh, sir, yeah, S U R. Yeah, I'll send it to our. Oh, paste yeah. it into our Telegram. Paste your. Go there and get your burner address and paste it back into my Telegram and I'll send you one. Okay, and we're going to bring the key. Then we're going to do get random number. So when we trigger the mint, we actually want it to do this random number thing. And we need to pass in a seed. Okay. Okay. Yep. Okay. Yeah, exactly. So what we can do here is, um, so we'll do the constructor and the constructor is where, uh, or we'll hit the get random number. We'll do a provider seed. And then we're going to do in this fulfill randomness function. So you just yep. grab that, grab this that. This is where the up. minting is going to happen, right? Yeah, this is Which where is the so minting. weird to think about. Yep. It's going to be <laughs> You're having like an, an Oracle callback that actually is uh, going to do the minting. So, uh, so eventually we'll get rid of this. We won't have a mint. Actually, maybe we just leave the mint function there and you can just, yeah, leave the mint function there and, and literally, uh, um, Oops. yeah, leave, leave the mint function and just add it to the, uh, fulfill function. Oh, okay. I, I was going yeah. in a little bit different direction. I was going to have the mint. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Cause this, this is going to have to go through like the fulfill is not going to be able to pass arguments. Like, can I pass arguments that the fulfill guy will bring back to me? Yeah. So, so you see that request ID UN 256 randomness, that randomness argument is what's being returned from the, uh, um, yeah, by the I'm node. saying like, what if, what if I want to pass a two and a memory and then have them come back 
that's not oh, with, with, with oh, these oh. arguments i don't think that's going to work the yeah. same way yeah yeah I, I i see what you're saying so so what we can do then is we we can just have the um we can have the um uh we can have the randomness just mint the thing and then we'll just have another uh, function that's like set you set token uri so instead of oh, this okay. we'll just be like set token uri um and then list this one which which actually will be better because it'll be less gas so in the fulfill function we can literally just do you know mint um what is two? Oh, two is uh i feel like is... yeah i feel like what we should do is just kind of just do this in steps and phases so you mm -hmm. you'll go you'll fight you'll trigger it to go get a randomness it'll come mm -hmm. back with the randomness and then you'll trigger another thing that mints it with the randomness that came back so let's just like create some un 256 that we're watching here okay actually you may have done that oh random result right ah uh, yeah yep. okay so random result here there we go so we'll say we're just going to use that random result here. Perfect. Yeah. Right. Perfect. Right. So, well, it, like, obviously, you would need to build this more. You would need to be thinking like state machine here, and you need to would, yep. would need to set up modes, and you would need to make the rules so like they can't mint until the randomness is updated. Yeah. But yeah, we're just going to do it kind of. If, if you guys want to see like um like a like a the solution where like the on the fulfill it actually like mints and everything, go check out the the Dungeons and Dragons D and D because that's what that does. But yeah, for this one, we're just going to have it return a random number. And then we'll just have we'll just add that random number to this mint function here. So uh, we can give like our token here, like uh, like just some type of attribute, like whatever we want to give it. It's yeah, it's to token luck. We got it. Oh, token right. luck. That's right. Token yeah, luck like, is going to be a randomness result when it. When Perfect. It is. Perfect. So let's do uh, so it. So let's see. Let's make sure token luck is public too. Yeah. Okay. Right, so cool. let's see. If I man, I feel like I should deploy this locally to make sure it's going to work. Do you, okay. What do you deploy it locally? Is that okay? Like, well, it it won't it won't work locally first. It actually. won't work, but let's just make sure it like goes right. Okay. Yeah. yeah sure. Search. I, I'm sure I have syntax errors. Just to just to kick it off. <laughs> sure. <laughs> yep. Uh, okay. So back to our contract. Yeah. Goodness. We do a little. Oh, this is kind of fun. Yeah, we do a little bit of live building here. See. Wait. The third that third parameter in request request randomness this user provided seed oh I need to set that somewhere huh oh yeah yeah so like uh uh work return maybe so, oh so you got to be got, here you, did I mess you, up my arguments I did yes okay you got rid of it in there yeah just yep. yeah just add it back in just you went 256 there you go nice so I'll need to make a call okay the one thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take out this ownership pattern too this ownership pattern is clunky. Oh, so. Right, like let's sure. let's remove all the rules just to make it work, and then kind of build them back in. But yeah, yeah sure. All right, there we go. And request ID doesn't look like it's used here. Oh, because but it's gonna be they're gonna call it in. It the the Oracle is gonna bring me back the request ID in case I need to do something here. In yeah. fact, I could use that request ID to store this random exactly. result, and it could be exactly. different for different ones. Okay, cool. Yeah, exactly. Yep. That, right. That's, so that's looks... exactly what the Dungeons and Dragons thing says. Yep, Dope. spot on. Yep. Okay, so let's now, I, okay, so now that it compiles, I, <laughs> let's send it <laughs> to Rinkaby. Yeah. And and how would you test this locally? Like, how would you at least poke around locally to make sure it works? Can you yeah, so bring up a Docker so, container that? No, so so lo I mean, so you could run some like spin up your own node and do some stuff. But um, for usually for local testing, you just you use a, a mock VRF coordinator that just returns like a dummy random number, like this okay. is the same random cool. number. So yeah, so just like testing, a mock you, contract, and basically exactly. you call it and it calls right back to the other thing, and you make sure it's going to yeah. do okay. Yeah. you kind of just pretty, mock up that. Go yeah, ahead, pretty sorry. much the same way, like in in like traditional computer science, like you're gonna mock a lot of API calls because you're not trying to you know ping the the data the production database for your uh for your stuff. Oh no, my it, the site went away because let's see if I set this back to the local. Oh, I've already deployed. I was gonna send you. I can send you one of these. We'll we'll do it again. We'll do the build again. <laughs> okay. Uh, wait, that's not Rinky's not right. There we go. All right, let's make sure we got our front end. Let's make sure we have our address. So it should be C28 something. And this should be out on Rinkaby. All right, cool. So now we have our token contract. So the first thing we want to do is ping the, uh, we want to do the get random number, right? That's our first step. So I'm yep. going to go to the contracts. I'm going to find get random number. And I'm going to need to do it with my MetaMask account because yep. I think I have link in there. Nice. So Let's see. Let's see. Okay. Get random number. So give it a seed. Doesn't matter. 
right? right. Just kind of some random number that knows that they're not messing so with us. You, you actually need link in the in the contract itself. So we're going ah, to have to okay. grab the contract Let's, address, send us some yeah. link. Yeah. Ooh, which means I need to link, add the link contract. You you okay, already yeah. talked about that. Okay, off the top of your head, what's the address? <laughs> yeah, yeah, on, yeah. I, I got off what, the top link, of my head. Link, link, Let's let's see who gets the faster. Ring me link address. Yep. I'm I'm gonna get it faster because I'm already what? here. I got it right here. I'm already what there. you got it? Yeah. No, wait, how did you get it faster? Why why am I so much slower than you? Uh, no I just said I just said the two. Yeah. So yeah, cool. so and uh, I've got my 200. Good news, right. good news. It's sitting there. Okay, okay. and we need right. to chuck it into the contract. So I'll mm -hmm. grab that contract. Oops, not that here. And we will send. Whoa, that's Rinka B. Oh man. Oh man. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Okay. Assets. Link. Send. This dude. One. How many do we uh, need? Let's let's do ten, just in case we want to do a whole bunch. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You, cool. you should only need like point one or something, but let's right. just let's go. Uh, ten link headed to the contract. Mac match up that blocky there and there. Looks good. Hit send. Fifteen seconds. Right. And let's see. So we'd have to like go out to the, let's just assume that it's going to be in there. Cause uh, I don't want to like go out and check it. Okay. So yeah. then get random number. We're basically waiting for that ring to be to come in. Oh, here we go. Oh, looks like it came in. So we're good to go. Cool. So if we All hit, right. uh, where's that public variable random result? Cause then we can just look at that. Um, yep. wait, wait for the random number to get back. There it is. Oh, we so got we're refreshing. waiting. Yeah, it's my, it's my, <laughs> I got to fix you're this. Good, you're good, you're good, you're good. <laughs> so 15 <laughs> seconds later, we're assuming they're going to call back to us, fulfill randomness and set this random Correct. result. And, yep. then, and then we're we going to have that a random our... result that's going to let us uh -huh. mint something that's going to set our token luck. Mm -hmm. And we probably should have added a mod there. Like it should have been like zero to a hundred or oh, something like snap. that. Because we're oh, gonna yeah, have a gigantic number. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be some insane token luck. Oh my yep. goodness. Oh well, oh well. Okay, let's see. Come yeah. on. Do we have a oh no? It hasn't called yeah. back to our contract yet. Yeah, we just wait, we was to... this the same thing that we were having happen in in your no what for the around? random the oh, random okay. that was something is... else? Yeah, the random thing should work fine. Yeah, we'll we'll uh there's a, there's be a good rank be. This there's is a good test chance. net. There we go. Random. Yeah, Boom. Yeah. Four five oh nine five six five. What? That's seven, that's nine. that's the that's the yep. weird part about working with test nets is like I, I've had I've had times when like I've I've looked back and I'm like, well, why hasn't this worked? And it was like, oh, the test net was just kind of like sharded at the time, or like sharded is the wrong word, but like it's having like a like Robson had like that massive reorg. Oh yeah. Yeah. Which oh was, yeah. Which was oh, like yeah. When like, you're a I, new I, developer and stuff isn't working for you, so many yeah. things. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I remember that. Where and then you find out it's been the test net. It's been the public test net this whole yep. time. Yep. <laughs> I've been yep. there. Okay, so we've got Buffalo here. We're gonna upload Buffalo to IPFS, and then we're gonna bring that over to here where we can mint. And Buffalo is gonna be four nine four five zero nine lucky. <laughs> uh, we'll mint it to Austin Griffith .e. Let's see if this works. Here we go. And if we were to pay 131 or whatever, oh, only $52 to mint this if we were doing Hey, it there you go. That. Not Here we go. Terrible. Now, if I go back to my collectibles, let's see what happens. So we're not displaying his luckiness. I wonder if I could have that displayed in the app. We'd have to just Whoops. We'd have to oh. we'd have to put that into IPFS. So wherever your your metadata is, we could just right. update the metadata with the luck. Well, well, I was thinking you could do just like a read. So I could go to let's see, I could go to the contracts. Okay, so we know it's token one, right? If I go to the contracts and I'm reading mm. what what token luckiness or something like that, token luck. Here it is. If I ask for the token luck of one, it should be the four five oh nine, right? So nice. that's how you would get there your you luckiness. Go. Yeah. Yep. Cool. Yep. So the and last it, thing to do here, I mean, we've got our, our luckiness built in. Basically, you would you would build defenses up. You would build this so it's a state machine. It needs yep. to be it needs to be in the minting state. Then it needs to yep. be in the rolling state. Yep. And it needs exactly. to be in the waiting yep. state. And then you kind of repeat that. And you don't let them call any of these functions if not. So there's kind of like a ceremony. Go ahead. I, I really I really want people to build these out and and just like have like these NFTs like battle each other with these random stats, like almost like um like with like pokemon if you ever played they had um they had what's called like ivs which were their their hidden values which determined how like much experience they gained um so like whenever they like battled they got more or less experience depending on their hidden values which is like pretty sick so i think this would be like a sick way to do that like a super super simple like nft random pokemon type game where like the the characters are truly 
you know, random and truly scarce because of that. It's not like some, some DAO who's like, hey, I feel like minting 10 super random ones today. It's just anybody can mint and anybody can get like a crazy sick rare one um, just by luck. That's so generative art is big right now, right? Yeah, like super. It, like and and basically generative, they're using block hashes and yep. stuff, or even VRF random. But what if we lean into a different part of Chainlink and we have an API set up, and oh, you're be- you're actually minting an NFT that's generatively displayed based on like some random API, like the weather, yeah. right? You, like the weather where you are, that yeah. NFT is going to be generated with like happy, Yo, you know. Wait, that would be such a sick yeah. NFT. If like, if like, if it was raining, it like was raining yeah. in the NFT. Yeah, like, when you meant it. Oh my yeah. God, that would be wild. Yeah. Oh, that'd be so cool, Austin. <laughs> I'm going to call it, okay, so where, I call where this was deployment Washington? token luck. Whoever's was watching, that- please build these. Like, like you yeah, said. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and and all of this stuff, and the point of all of this stuff is this stuff is so easy to fork and take off the shelf, right? Like I have never worked with Chainlink before. I watched you do that and I brought it in. It was ugly, but I just <laughs> copy and pasted the example and I'm getting VRF on chain, right? Like it's not super difficult if you have good tools and a good base and you know, you you kind of you should you should head to Token Luck and give me your address. I want to send you this buffalo on your site, and and maybe we could switch sharing screens and we could see the buffalo show up to you or something like that. Yeah, I'm oh, sorry, I was I was supposed to do something when we when you're doing stuff. What's <laughs> I'm heading to just Token go to Luck Token Luck. Luck. <laughs> just go to tokenluck.surge.sh and paste me your address. Surge.sh. Boom, I'm there. Awesome. Copy. Got an address for me? I got an address for you. Wait, where'd you, you send it to the ch- Oh, I oh, sent it to the Zoom, sorry. Zoom I'll chat. Send it no, I got you, I got you. <laughs> Gross. Oh, you sent the other one there too, sorry, man. Oh, okay, good, good, must good. be your pink pink dude. Okay, I'm gonna transfer this to you pink and then, you. yep. And then no, I want you side. to share your screen. I'm gonna sure. drop off here. Well, we'll see my, we'll see, we'll see my I'll super- stop the share. See my randomized. And let's see if it shows up on your side. Yeah. Yes. There it is. <laughs> and is it so hard? now you're the owner of that token. And oh, you can see transfers. You can see the log of transfers. But then really, you you want to go see how lucky your token is. You would get in here and find that token Random token randomness and put in one, and you're going to get that four five zero nine. Yep, token luck. There well, we go. Pulled and from obviously, a random from on chain. That's cool. And then obviously we, we would we would module this, and you get like a yep. like a number between but whatever but this is my luck my luck is insane i have yep. uh i have stupid luck stupid have lucky t- buffalo 255 deaths or um a digits worth of luck that's a we yep. got a good amount of luck here. 256 bits yeah 256 yep. bits of luck yep. yeah yep that's a lot of luck <laughs> yeah this, this is has sick, been though. awesome man any, yeah, this is cool. any like closing things to check out i feel like if someone wants to get started i would just say like go to scaffold ETH, search for Chainlink. i'm sure Chainlink has some awesome docs like is it just docs.chainlink that it's yeah it's docs docs.chain.link um so head over there and, and oh like dude the, that is an artisanal url i like that yeah, very right. much it's, it's yes. super easy to uh yeah it's super easy Sir, to sergey's had that for 20 years too and no one <laughs> yeah, knows right. about it <laughs> um but yeah like the docs are super easy like you, you can deploy stuff with remix just to like just to see it and then literally copy paste like that's what i did for the scaffold ETH. copy paste the code into scaffold ETH. you know uh put your random numbers into your into your bisons into your art into whatever you want upload to ipfs um but yeah like we like the ideas that we were talking about like that sounds so cool like building some type of art based off the weather building some type, like an art based off the president that changed depending on who the president of the United States or, or whatever was like, Oh my God, that would be so love cool. It. Cause you can yes. get any data into these yep. NFTs, whatever, any random number you could have it based off of like the price of an asset. Like that'd be kind of cool. Almost like, um, Austin, have you seen those like 3d printed, like logos of the token with where at the bottom, it says like the, um, the price you could have an NFT. That's like the same thing as that but with the price of an asset and then you wouldn't even have to make the API calls yourself. Like so many, so many insane cool, cool stuff you can do here. I love it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. It's the, in the, in the kind of like DeFi and the NFT and the Ethereum worlds are all kind of like getting really hot and there's a ton of new developers coming in. So just having stuff like this, having tools that you can grab all this stuff off the shelf and just take that ID, that, that, that idea from zero to one, 
in a 45 minute session, right? Like we basically, if I want to put this on mainnet, I'm going to change a couple variables here. I'm going to replace Rinkaby with mainnet and I'm going to hit go and I'm going to pay $500 <laughs> and, and it's going to, and all of this goes live online. Right. And we were seeing it was about like $40 to transfer it. Yeah. Go ahead. Or we, or we do it on, or we do it on Matic. Um, yep. You just change a couple of addresses to the being the Matic ones and, and then yep. same thing. Cause yeah, VRF is live on Matic as well. Um, and, and, you know, Matic is like, they, they just brought on a Atari actually. So the VRF for gaming is like spot on right now. Um, that's like, it's perfect timing. Perfect, perfect timing. Dope. Awesome. Patrick, thank you, man. It's been a, it's been a fun bow tie Friday. Bow tie Friday. Both of us bow tie Friday. Yeah. Thank you so much, Austin. Yeah. This was, this is a blast dude. Yeah. We, uh, we got through a lot of stuff. Yeah, I can't do that. It was fun, dude. <laughs> it doesn't, it just, it just looks right on a zoom. Doesn't it? <laughs> Maybe give it a lean. Give we, it a lean. we have like exactly the right amount of space to do that. Yeah. Right there. <laughs> Perfect. All right, Patrick, this has been wonderful. Thank you very much. Happy Bowtie Friday. It's been good hanging with you. Uh, I'll talk to you soon, man. I look to see, I'll put this out on YouTube very soon. I'll send awesome. it to you first. All right, okay. later. <laughs>